Hey everybody, welcome to my video on proportions. And proportions are just two ratios that are equal to each other. Um, so let's say we had the ratio $1 to 10 pesos. Um, if you exchange $1 at the airport, you'd get 10 pesos. Um, this is exactly equal to $10 to 100 pesos. If you exchange $10 at the airport, you'd get a hundred pesos. That's because these two ratios are exactly the same. Uh, they are proportional to each other. Uh, what we did was just multiply both the top and the bottom by 10. Um, and this makes sense. Um, if you have 10 times more dollars, that means you're also going to have uh, 10 times more pesos. So this is what a proportion is. And in this video, I'm going to talk about how to solve proportions and in the last example, I will go over a proportion word problem. So let's get started right away on the first example. So here we have the proportion example. 5 over x is equal to 10 over 3. And notice how we have a missing value of x. So we need to solve this proportion for x. And a common way of solving proportions is cross multiplying. So that's what we're going to do. And when we cross multiply, you need to take the denominator x cross over and multiply it by 10. And we need to do the same thing with the other denominator. We need to take the 3, cross over, and multiply it by the 5. So in red we have x times 10, and that is equal to what we multiplied in blue. And in blue we have 3 times 5. So in red we have x times 10, which is just 10x, and in blue we have 3 times 5, which is just 15. So now we need to get x by itself. Since 10 is being multiplied by x, we can get rid of it by dividing. So I'm going to divide both sides by 10. On the left, our 10s cancel out, and we're left with our x. And on the right, we have 15 over 10, which can be reduced. Uh, both numbers can be divided by 5 evenly. Uh, 15 divided by 5 is equal to 3, and 10 divided by 5 is equal to 2. So this is our final answer. x is equal to 3 over 2. Now let's go over a harder example. So here we have 2 over x minus 2 is equal to 3 over x plus 1, and once again we're going to cross multiply. So we're going to take our x minus 2 and multiply it by the 3. And we're going to take our x plus 1 and multiply it by the 2. So in red we have x minus 2 being multiplied by 3. And in blue we have x plus 1 being multiplied by 2. So now we just need to solve this equation for x. So first let's get rid of these parentheses and distribute. So if we distribute our 3 with our x and with our negative 2, 3 times x is equal to 3x, and 3 times negative 2 is equal to negative 6. And on the right-hand side, we have 2 being multiplied by the x, and 2 being, being multiplied by positive 1. Uh, 2 times x is equal to 2x, and 2 times positive 1 is equal to positive 2. So now let's get all our x terms on one side and all of our constants on the other. So first I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. So if I subtract 2x from the right and 2x from the left. On the left side we have 3x minus 2x, which is equal to 1x, or just x. And on the left side we also have a negative 6. And this is equal to the right side, which has the 2x and the negative 2x that cancel out. And we also have a positive 2 on the right side. And now if we add 6 to both sides, the negative 6 and the positive 6 on the left cancel out, and the only thing we're left with is x. And on the right we have 2 plus 6, which is equal to 8. So our final answer is x is equal to 8. So now let's go over one more example, which is a word problem. So here in this problem it says the currency in Spain is the euro. If I exchange $250 at the airport, how many euros will I get in return? And the exchange rate is 1 euro is equal to $1.38. So the first thing I like to do is write down the ratio which I know is true. I know that 1 euro 
to $1.38. So let me write that down. One euro to $1.38. $1.38. And I can use this ratio, which I know is true, to find out how many euros or dollars I can get. So I'm going to make another ratio. And in this one, the units in the numerator and denominator have to be exactly the same. Um, since euros are in the numerator, we know in this one, euros also have to be in the numerator. And since dollars are in the denominator, um, in this ratio, dollars also have to be in the denominator. So now let's go back and see what we're solving for. It says that we have $250 at the airport, so we know that we have $250. And it's asking us, how many euros will I get in return? Um, so we don't know how many euros we have yet. So we'll just say that we have X amount of euros. So now we just need to solve for X. And once again, we need to cross multiply. So we'll multiply 250 times 1 and 1.38 times X. So in red, we have 250 times 1 and in blue, we have 1.38 times x. So on the left in red, we have 250 times 1, which is just 250. And on the right, we have 1.38 times x, which is just 1.38x. So now, since 1.38 is being multiplied by x, let's divide by 1.38 to get rid of it. And whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other side. So on the right side, our 1.38 is canceled, and the only thing we're left with is x. And on the left, in the left-hand side, we have 250 divided by 1.38. I'm just going to type that in my calculator, and we get a final answer of 181.16. And whenever you're dealing with money or currency, um, you should always round to two decimal points. And uh, our final answer should be in euros because uh, in our in our ratio, our value of x had the currency of euros. So we know that our answer, 181.16, is in euros. So $250 is equal to 181 euros and 16 euro cents. So I hope this gave you a better idea on how to solve proportions. And I will be making many more videos in the future, so stay tuned for that. I really hope that you're enjoying these, and I will see you in my next one.